Hello there and welcome back once again to another edition of Silly Car Showdown. Today we are taking a look at the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 9. This car was requested by a Lotus Enduro GT. And uh, yeah, it is our first Mitsubishi to take on the course. Of course, we've had plenty of Super Impressors. This is the alternative to the Super Impressor, And in my opinion, not quite as good, but I still do like the Mitsubishi Evos quite a lot, especially the 3, 6 and 9, uh, the Evo 9 you can see here in the absolutely exquisite Scorpion's livery from Need for Speed Carbon. Anyways, we do have a bit of an interesting turn of events when it comes to this Evo. You see, Lotus wants it ran with the stock engine, which I'm perfectly fine with because the other engines are a V8 and a Turbo Rally, which I don't particularly want to use. Uh, so that's what we're going to stick with and we're going to see how much power we can get out of the stock engine. Uh, I actually quite like the fact that canards are uh, purple on that one. It has a bit of a silly looking front grille, but solid will have that. Uh, of course, this car does have a lot of different body mods, including the most ridiculous wing in the world. I'm kind of tempted to put that on, but at the same time, I think that wing is also... That wing is pretty... Yeah, we got to go for that wing. That wing is ridiculous as well. Um, the exhaust is apparently see-through. Sure. Uh, we'll go for some carbon fibre bits on the bottom of it, I guess. And uh, apparently these improve drag, so uh, they're both pretty hideous, actually, to be honest with you. Uh, that one's probably the better of the two. It seems to suit the car's body angle slightly better, so we'll go with that. Uh, tires not expecting all that much in the way of greatness here. Two 75s on the front and two 75s on the rear. Okay, pretty... Standard stuff, it has to be said. We will, of course, as usual, pull the track out if we can, which we can in the Evo. Uh, it looks a bit ridiculous for now. Hopefully that will go down a little bit, although looking at those wheel gaps, maybe not. Uh, but we shall see. Uh, you never know. You never know. Maybe it will uh, fix itself. Uh, brakes, we want those. Suspension, yes, please. Uh, does that make it look less ridiculous? There's still a little bit too much wheel gap for me, but I can put up with it, I guess. Um, I'm not expecting this one to be massively quick. Of course, uh, we do, however, have a perfect comparison for this car, at least. Uh, we do have the Hawkeye Impreza, which went around on its stock engine, so it'll be interesting to see sort of how the Evo compares when it's ran on its stock engine. It is gaining PI quite nicely here, though. Um, yeah, apparently the cams hurt the launch for some reason. Sure, I guess that's how logic works sometimes. Uh, ooh, we are going to get 10 launch at least, and 10 acceleration. Exciting times for the Mitsubishi Alanza Evo. And we're going to cap off at S1871. I can't actually remember what the Subaru was. Whoa, 2.2 seconds to 60. That's very quick. 210 miles an hour, 661 horsepower, 548 foot pound torque, 2,820 pounds of weight. Hmm. I'm very curious about this one. I, I, I don't quite remember off the top of my head, but I have a sneaking suspicion that, a suspicion the Subaru had more torque. Uh, this might have more all outright power. In terms... I almost said alt-right power. That would have been not good. Uh, yeah. Outright power. So... Hum de la hum. I think it's going to be quick. The question is, will it be able to top a mighty Impreza? Let's go find out. Well, here we are at our lovely Edinburgh course, ready to take the Mitsubishi Alanza Evo around to see what it can do. Our current leader is the Ferrari Baghini Krokan V12 GT. That's at a time of 1.35.743. The Evo is unlikely to beat that. Instead, it has a very personal rivalry. It has the superb Subaru Impreza Hawkeye, which was run also with its stock engine, like this Evo's being. Uh, that's at a 1.45.958. Question is, can the Evo beat in Pretzer? In the Hot Lap Classic, which is another series kind of similar to this that I ran uh, on Gran Turismo 2, uh, the answer was yes. Uh, the Evos were often quicker than the Impreza's. Not by much, but they were quicker. Um, I think they are slightly lighter and slightly more agile. Uh, while the Impreza's do offer slightly better long-distance capabilities, I guess? Question mark? I mean, they're more reliable, there's no question about that. Uh, anyways, I do actually like the Evo 9. Again, Scorpion's livery, I had to. I mean, 
Thank you to whoever created this, who recognised the best Need for Speed car that no one remembers, unfortunately. I say no one remembers, and then I'll get that person in the comments like, everyone knows that car. Uh, but yeah, my favourite of the underrated, or underappreciated, no. I guess boss cars, the, the sad truth of Scorpions in Carbon is they really should have been more freshed out. I really wish they were because I want their livery on like every car they have. Like it looks superb on R on R thirty fours, RX eight. Um, but of course, people, if they remember Scorpions at all, only remember the Evo, which is fine by me because the Evo looks spectacular. But even still, it is kind of bittersweet sweet for me because I am kind of like uh, I wish I wish this crew uh, was really used in the game because the ironic thing is their livery is so much better than. But most of the other crews in Carbon, I mean, Kenji's Bushido had an okay livery, Wolf really didn't, I mean, it suited his character, but at the same time, you know, when you've got Scorpion's uh, livery lying on your doorstep, like, well, why not use that? Uh, there was also those, um, oh god, I can't remember them. I think there was like uh, the Black Hearts, maybe they were called, or something like that, they had a pretty interesting livery as well. Um, of course, the issue is most of them would I should stop talking about Need for Speed Carbon and start talking about Forza Horizon 4, shouldn't I? Uh, I mean, to be fair, I rate Carbon very highly. Probably my second favourite Need for Speed game. Underground 2 is still my favourite, just because Underground 2 is an incredible... Underground 2 is one of those games where it like still holds up to this day fantastically well. And then Carbon's just, in my opinion, the perfect length. It's got a really strong car list, strong story. I like it a lot. Uh, anyways, yeah. The Evo. Much to no one's surprise, it drives rather well. If I had to say something, not quite as well as the Subaru. It's a little bit more understeery than the Subaru. I wasn't really expecting that. I was expecting the Evo to be a little bit more agile than the Subi, but no. Uh, the Subi has got it beat in the handling stakes, only slightly, I mean, the Evo is still a pretty darn impressive car uh, to drive and throw around here, so... It's not like I'm complaining or anything like that, but uh, yeah, the Evo doesn't feel quite as poised, as natural as the Impreza did. I mean, again, the Hawkeye Impreza is a truly phenomenal car, so I guess it makes sense, but... Even still, I mean, we still have plenty of laps to do in this car, so I'm sure uh, it will go quicker than that 147. It's probably going to get close uh, to the Subi, I'd imagine. I mean, the Subi did set a... Uh, Subi basically had a lap where everything went right for that car. So, if I can get one of those sort of laps in this car, who knows, really. It has been a while since I drove that Subaru. In fact, actually, ironically enough, this is episode 36. Also, you might have noticed this car's the Evo 9. There's a bit of a pun in there. Um, yeah, the this is episode 36. That Impreza was actually run in episode 16. So exactly 20 episodes ago uh, is when we saw the Hawkeye Impreza take on the course. Before the Huracan ruled the roost. That was back when the NSX GT, I think, was the quickest car we'd had. Yeah, I think we'd had the Stelvio beaten by it just beforehand. A long, long time ago, there's many cars that have beaten the uh, the Stelvio at this point. Many cars that have beaten the NSX at this point is now in seventh place. Uh, so yeah, we we are. I, I'm still trying to contain a good amount of variety in this series. If you uh, don't think I'm doing as much variety, if there's a certain type of car you want to see more of, I guess let me know. Uh, don't just say your request. Um, I get it. I I am going through them, but do understand there's only four of these a week, so. I, I, I can only do so many requests at once because I can only backlog so much. Uh, a 147403 for the Mitsubishi Evolution. There we go. I just thought I can make a pun out of the name of this car as well. Fantastic. Um, yeah, it is pretty nice though. There is no getting around the fact that this is an excellent car to drive. I said it with the Subaru, I'm going to say it with the Evo. Uh, you know, if you're ever in a tough spot in Forza, if you're not sure what sort of car you need to build, if you need to build an all-round car, 
Or if you need to build a car for a specific series and you're just not sure what to build for, you know, whether you need a dirt car or a road car or a race car or a, I guess maybe a drag car. These are excellent cars. These are excellent platforms in which to build on. Both the Impreza and the, uh, the Lancer Evolutions. They offer four-wheel drive. They weigh not too much. They have good power from factory. You could do a lot with the standard engines. There's... You know, a decent amount of, uh, in the case of Subarus, there's plenty of amount of variety for engine swappages. Uh, if you need something with a little bit more poke or a little bit more torque or whatever you need, you know. These cars are really adaptable uh, and they're excellent, you know. Whenever uh, we used to run, ooh, that was, that lap would almost have been perfect as well if I didn't do that. Bollocks. Um, I remember we used to run challenges back on the original Forza Horizon, and I'm, if I remember correctly, we actually had to ban the Evo 6 from showing up after a while, and indeed, I think we later banned some Subarus, just because they're so adaptable, they're so easy to work with, they're so cheap. <laughs> um, you know, these are not expensive cars to buy in-game. You can pick one of them up, you can pick many of them up for, you know, 20,000 credits. The auction house is swimming uh, with fully upgraded ready to go impressors for like under 50 it's insane you know so you can really pick yourselves up a bargain with this car whether you buy it from the actual also show itself in game or whether you buy it from the auction house or whatever you know these cars are cheap they're easy they're cheap they're disposable and they're just excellent you know if you ask me what the best sort of all-round car in Forza is you, I would be very hard pressed to not claim it to be an Impreza, uh, you know, and to a lesser extent an Evo. The Evo, in my opinion, is not quite as adaptable as the Impreza, you know, there's not quite as many engines on offer, uh, but they're still excellent cars. In terms of road racing cars, I believe the Evo might even be very slightly quicker. I'm not sure stock, though. That might change soon, because I've got a plan, but... Uh, for now, I, I don't really know. I, I I think around Top Gear in Forza 6 on 7, uh, Evos and Impressors are relatively close together. I think the Evos have the slight edge in the later Forza games. That was very good through there. That was very, very good through there. Come on, Evo. What sort of time can we set with you? On the brakes, somewhat early, I guess. Gonna clip that, go on two wheels, doesn't really matter though, four wheel drive system will work its way out of there. Come on, Evo! Oh, it's gonna be close! Ah, not quite! Oh, 146, 805 for the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution. Not quite as quick as the Impreza. Still, I mean, considering its stock engine, it's 600 horsepower. How much is it again? 661 horsepower. How much boots are we making, actually? Is that only... Oh, 29 pounds, that's quite a lot. Um, yeah, you know, considering it has 660 horsepower, bear that in mind when, you know, a 146.805 will still put this car into 15th place. It goes... Uh, like, yeah, there you go. I just doubly, I got confused by my own leaderboard for a second there. Let me try that again. Goes into 15th place. It beats out the Lotus Carlton uh, by 0.6 of a second. That was running 1,200 horsepower. It beats out the 1,500 horsepower Ludicrous Limo. Beats out Cayman GTS, the Nova uh, 240Z. It's slightly off of a Viper Box Mustang. That had 1,200 horsepower. GT40 EcoBoost. It's only 0.8 of a second behind. And the Impreza. You know, it's only 0.9 of a second away. It's not worlds apart. It's just not quite there compared to the Impreza. Uh, which is a little bit of a shame. Uh, it's just not quite as good a handling. Straight line speeds are around similar. Uh, but it is still an exquisite car. You know, I really do not want to take away from the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 9. This is still an incredible car and one that I would recommend. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching this edition of Silly Car Showdown. If you'd like to request cars for the series, you can do so down below in the comment section. Alternatively, if you go into the description, you can see my Discord. Uh, join that and post your cars in the request chat is what I would recommend. That's how you can 100% confirm I will see them because I'm a bit dopey. 
Um, if you're watching this on HE Central, you've enjoyed me. My name's Emil. You can find my link down below in the description. I produce sort of subpar content like this, where I go off on tangents about games that are completely unrelated to the game I'm actually playing. Um, other than that, though, thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, a farewell. Thank you.